Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make croissants. This will be my first attempt, so I have absolutely no idea how the end, will, end result will look like. So if you want to see if this recipe works, stay tuned and watch how I'm doing it. We will need flour, preferably bread flour with high content of gluten, water, room temperature water, a little bit of softened butter, sugar, salt and instant yeast. And then for lamination we will need additional uh, piece of butter that is just a little bit softened. I just took it out of the fridge one hour ago. So first we will need to prepare the dough for lamination. We just add all the ingredients, sugar, salt and yeast. And just mix it roughly, butter and water. And right now we need to mix it on a low setting for around 10 minutes until it forms quite soft and uniform dough. In the beginning it will look very dry, don't worry, don't add any more water to it. In the end it will be as it should be. And right now our dough is ready. As you can see it stays uniform but it is still quite tough, tough. Uh, but it's no longer sticky. It's good. And right now we need to rest the dough for one hour. Uh, after one hour it will more or less double in size because the yeast start to work and the fermentation starts. We need to just cover the bowl with a cling film and put aside in a warm place uh, for more or less one hour. While the dough is resting we can prepare the butter for lamination. We need to mold it into a form of square 20 by 20 centimeters, more or less. In order to do that, we need to uh, prepare the cling film, first layer of cling film, and then we need to cut our butter into four e uh, more or less equal uh, pieces. And we just put it in the middle of the cling film, side by side. And right now, we cover it with another piece of cling film. It's good to use the ruler. We need to uh, mold it into 20 by 20. And at the beginning, we do not seal these sides because there is a lot of air bubbles inside. So we want to get rid of them while we are rolling the uh, butter. But right now, we just need to roll the butter. we measure 20 centimeters on this side and more or less until here I will just roll it one direction first right now our butter is ready we can put it into the fridge to cool down it needs to be very very cold uh, because it is thin so we don't want it to melt when we laminate the dough. That's how the dough looks like after one hour resting. It is more or less double in size. Right now we need to cool it down because before the lamination we don't want the yeast to be active any longer. So in order to do that we need to put our dough into the fridge to stop the fermentation. So the best is to put it into the fridge for a whole night otherwise for at least three to four hours. We cover it again. We don't want any smells from the fridge getting into the dough and we put it into the fridge for three to four hours or overnight. Okay, right now I just took the dough and the butter from the fridge. We have to knead the dough just a little bit. You have to flour the surface so it doesn't stick. And you just take it out of the bowl it is cold, okay, and we just knead it to 
this a couple of times. The dough is playable again. So right now we need to roll it into a rectangle more or less 40 centimeters by 40 centimeters. Use some flour so it doesn't stick to the surface and we just roll it. When our dough is more or less the correct shape we just take our butter remove it from the cling film put it like this in the middle of the dough and remove the top of the cling film we need to fold the dough just take the corners and fold it into the middle we can press a little bit to get rid of any air bubbles that are inside okay and it's ready right now we add more flour underneath and we roll the dough again this time we will be rolling it into one direction up down so we don't roll it on the sides we just want one long rectangle okay right now the rectangle is ready so we will be folding it like that to the middle and from here to the middle as well and then we just fold it on itself like this so we have nice rectangles and this moment we have four layers at this moment we just put it into the cling film and uh, we place it in the fridge for half an hour or we can put it into the freezer for 10 minutes after 10 minutes in the freezer we can roll it again and fold again this time we place it like this and we are rolling it into another rectangle more or less the same size as it was before so we will be rolling it both sides this time this and this way okay so our rectangle is ready so we will be folding it exactly the same way as before so we fold it as a book in four like this this side and then one more time like this our rectangle is ready and right now because we were working on it it was rolled up so basically it was heated up a little bit so we uh, will be putting it into the cling film and again we'll be putting it into the fridge uh, for half an hour or 10 uh, minutes into the freezer after another 10 minutes in the freezer the dough is finally ready to be rolled up again and then cut into triangles so if you wonder why i don't use any flour on top of the surface right now even though in the beginning i did it is because i'm doing this uh, recipe the first time and what i found out after rolling it a couple of times is that it is so much easier to roll this dough when it is just a little bit sticky and basically it just holds onto the the top of the uh, worktop because otherwise it just shrinks again and you just can't roll it out so what i can recommend is just to roll it without any flour um, on the worktop and then just make sure it doesn't stick too much to the surface so right now we will be rolling it into the uh, rectangle again so both sides again and then we should be able to make eight croissants out of this so i will show you how to cut uh, the triangles afterwards first let me just roll it again okay so basically this time i found out that it was necessary to add just a little bit of flour on the worktop because the layers were so thin already covering the first layer of the butter that unfortunately it does uh, stuck a little bit to the worktop but yeah it was easy just to add a little bit of flour and it was easy to roll afterwards okay so right now let me show you how to uh, make the triangles so basically you just mark the middle and then more or less half of the way in between you mark again and the same on the side okay and then on the other side it will be more or less in the middle of the two and we go like this so and now we'll be just cutting the triangles out of this. And 
the last one will be just not perfect. It's good to just cut in the middle a little bit so the rolling is easier. And just like this. I've rolled out all of the croissants. The last one is just a little bit funny because basically uh, the triangle was too small. But anyway, this is the first time I'm making them and I think that they look not too bad as the first attempt. So right now um, I will be baking only two of them. The rest I want to freeze to see uh, how, if they are good um, to bake afterwards, after a couple of days. And then I will uh, tell you how it went. So right now, just two of them. This side, the very tiny piece downwards. These two, first we need to prove them. So we need to start the fermentation again. So they grow, expand and become nice and big. We put them uh, into the warm place for around one hour. Basically, we they just need to grow. So it's difficult to say for really how long they need to rest um, or you can just put them into the prover if you have one. Uh, the croissants were resting and proving for one hour right now. So um, right now we need to put the egg wash on top of them uh, and we need to preheat the oven to 215 degrees Celsius. It might be fun, it might be just top and bottom, however you want. Um, and we'll be baking them for uh, 10 minutes first. So let me prepare the egg wash, which is just the mixture of egg and milk. When we put on the egg wash, we need to be careful not to put it on the laminated side. We don't want to disturb this because it will raise and expand when it will be baking. So we put the egg wash only on the flat surface in here. In order to bake them, uh, we heated up the oven to 215 degrees. Right now, just before we open the oven, we lower the temperature to 200 because we will be baking them in 200. When I open the door, the temperature will lower inside the oven, so it will reach more or less 200. And we bake them in 200 degrees, top and bottom, for around 8 minutes. And then we'll be lowering the temperature still to 180 and we'll be continuing the baking for another 12 minutes. They are ready to be taken out of the oven. And right now the judging time. How do they look? Okay, so I can definitely say that the temperature of baking should be a little bit lower as the top is too brown. On the other side, when it comes to the dough itself, the lamination, it is very clearly visible. That is good. Right now, we just need to wait a little bit because they are just too hot to, to touch. Uh, when they cool down, I will be back to see how the bottom looks like and how they look inside. So underneath, yes, the same as with the top, a little bit too much color. So the next batch I will be baking in much lower temperature. So uh, if you want to see how it goes, just um, take a look at the update I will be uh, putting on the uh, YouTube as well. And right now, just, yeah, let's see. Okay, very flaky, very, very flaky. That's definitely a plus, but how do they look? Okay, so uh, definitely a little bit too dense. So I will have to work on this recipe uh, to make it more, um, light inside um, there should be much more uh, holes visible um, it's not bad when it comes to uh, the layers because they are very clearly visible but it is too dense 
So, yep, hopefully the next time I will be able to show you improve uh, recipe for that. Um, so, yep, yeah, just wait and see the update. That's it, guys. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. It was my first attempt at French croissants. As I promised, I want to update you on the croissants. So the yesterday's batch, uh, they didn't look perfect, but uh, on the plus side is that they tasted really good. So um, I have some big hopes for these ones. So uh, these two are the frozen batch. Uh, I defrosted the, uh, to them today in the morning and then um, I proofed them for one hour in more or less 28 degrees Celsius. And then um, uh, I baked them this time just in 170 degrees Celsius with fun uh, for exactly 25 minutes. So, as you can see, they look much better. They are not burnt. And if you want to see that on the bottom, they look absolutely great as well. And if you hear that, the crunch is there. As you can see, the lamination is very well visible. So, hopefully, they will look a little bit better inside as well. That's what we want to see and check. Uh, probably they will test more or less the same as yesterday's, which is good. And so, right now, let me check what they look inside. As you can see, oh la la, they are so crunchy. It's so difficult to cut them, really. They just disintegrate on touch, <laughs> which is... Not bad at all, because when you eat them, you want to see this flakiness. Okay, yes, they do look a little bit better than the yesterday's batch, but still a little bit too dense. So, uh, what is my final thought about this? Is that basically the next time I definitely need to uh, do uh, 12 layers instead of 16 layers and maybe work a little bit on the amount of butter that is inside because um, this part is quite moist. It shouldn't be that moist. It should be a little bit drier. So basically there is a little bit too much moisture in the dough itself or a little bit too much butter. So uh, I will be experimenting some more with croissants uh, because basically, even if they are not too good, they still are great when you eat them. So I don't mind. Uh, and I will update you if I find the perfect recipe to create this absolutely great, not only tasting, but also looking croissants. In the meantime, if you want to try this recipe, feel free. As I say, they look good and they taste even better. So it's not a bad combination at all. Stay tuned and wait for the update if I find the perfect recipe. Thank you guys and see you next time.